Amen. Praise God. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, I woke up this morning and, and I usually come here just totally not even knowing what I want to share and stuff, but I came here this morning pretty, um, uh, uh, no, uh, knowing what I wanted to share this morning. God just brought some things before my eyes this morning as I was sitting in uh, his, his presence and just spending time before church. And I want to talk about being spiritually healthy and being naturally healthy. There's a difference. We need them both. We live in the natural. We have natural things. We have natural feelings. We have, live in the natural, but we also should live in the spirit realm. We all should, should, should live spiritually. We also should have our eyes open spiritually. We need, natural, we need natural vision. We need natural health, but we need spiritual health and spiritual vision. Amen? Amen. And I and I I don't know. I kind of feel like teaching a little bit this morning. That's kind of the way I feel like the Lord's lead me, which is kind of uh, different from the way I usually go. But I just I'm just gonna flow with it, man. And if we're done in a half an hour, we're done in a half an hour. If we're done in eight hours, we're done in eight hours. Whatever. Everyone's getting agitated, agitated you know, they're fidgety now, right? But we'll more than likely be done in time because my son's playing at twelve thirty in Fresno. Amen. So. <clears throat> So there's your security net, amen? I'm just playing. I love you. He, I'm not just playing. He really is playing, but I don't, whatever the Lord wants to do, amen? And Shane understands that, amen? So Ephesians chapter 2, let's look at verse 1. It says here, and you he made alive. Just say he made me alive. Whew. Say I'm alive. <laughs> he made me alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Obviously, he's talking about the devil there, amen? He is the prince and power of the air. Verse 3, Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, say, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. I love that. I mean, you can chew on this forever. That where it says, He made us alive together with Christ. See yourself not being lower than a snake's belly. See yourself made together and risen with Christ. <coughs> That's how the Father sees you. When you become a born-again child of God and give your life to Christ fully, you repent of your sins, you confess Jesus as your Savior, you call Him to live in your heart, you become one with Him, praise God, hallelujah. When you do that, He sees you, the Father, He sees you raised up with Christ. And then it goes on to, talks about, and He sees you sitting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's you. That's me. But the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil, he knows it's stinking true. He knows it is. He knows he's done. He knows his goose is cooked. He knows it. So he does everything he can to get you and me to believe that we're worthless. That we can't make it. That the blood wasn't sufficient enough for me. Oh, I know it was for Brother Ron and Brother Glenn and Sister Bridget. I know the blood was good for them, but man, for me, I just don't know. That's what he tries to do to us. And then he gets us to focus on our mistakes, our failures, our past. He tries to get us to lean on those things and look back. And Oh, man. And the devil is a... Per I mean, he's an expert at doing that to Christians. That's what he lives for right now. He hates us. 
And I know this is, you know, I know this isn't anything new to a lot of us, but we've got to be reminded of this every day. I've got to remind myself every day that I am seated together in Christ. Because it's very easy to focus on your failure, to focus on your mistakes. You know, I used to have such a bad habit of when I'd blow it, I'd just, man, Mike, you're an idiot. You're stupid. Quit doing that. And I curse at myself. What a, well, I'm not going to say what a goofball because I'm, I'm not be cursing myself again. See? But he wants us to align ourselves with his words. Because when we align ourselves with the enemy's words, with the prince and power of the air, the devil's words, when we do that, it gives him power. And he tries to create, now here it is, strong delusion in our mind. To get us over into confusion, not only about natural things, but also about spiritual things. Listen, guys, believe it or not, we are our own worst critics sometimes. But God looks at us, and God looks at you, and God looks at me as, how can I help them fulfill what I've called them to fulfill? That, that's his constant gaze on us is that. His constant thought on us is, how can I help them fulfill the plan and purpose that I have for their lives while they're there on earth? How can I help them? That's the God we serve. Amen. Now I know that, you know, we, gotta, you know, we need to make sure we're being responsible and being disciplined, take care of ourselves, make sure that if we know we're living in something we shouldn't be living in and we know it's, there's conviction there, we need to deal with that. We need, to make, we, need to, we need to do what we need to do before the Lord to get out of those certain things. That's understandable. But don't crucify yourself because you're struggling in an area. Because, folks, believe it or not, we all deal with something in our lives, all of us. Every single person that's alive right now and their heart's pumping does. To the most famous TV preacher you think has never done anything, he has or she has. Or they're dealing with something right now. We all do. But see, let me tell you that as we are dealing with stuff in our life, it isn't, some, it isn't going to be an overnight thing sometimes. It might not happen overnight where you get fully delivered or your mind's fully renewed or something like that. It takes some time. Now, I'm teaching this morning now, and I would never get up here and teach something that I've never experienced. I learned that from a young age. I've been doing ministry now since 1995, and all those years I've learned you don't just get up there and just start saying a bunch of stuff that you've never really even experienced. Because how? It's hard. Because you don't understand. I went through leukemia. I went through cancer. I understand what people that are going through cancer is dealing with to a certain point. And I'm able to identify with them and help them and speak to them and share with them what helped me. And a lot of us are like that too. You've experienced things. You've dealt with things. You know how to talk to somebody or love on somebody. But let me tell you, the devil will try to get you into believing the lie. And what he does is he tries to get us to focus on how our life is now. Why am I like this now? How did this happen in my life? Where did this, you know, and he tries to get us to focus on, you're not going to ever get out of this. It's never going to change. You're going to be like this next year. Oh, the things you wish for, you might as well forget it. It's not going to happen because if God was going to do it, he would have already done it. It's all the same. One of those things I said, at least one of those you've heard just this week, maybe even this morning. And then he tries to pile it on with your family, your kids, your co-workers, your neighbor, that dog that barks eight hours a day, and it's always when you're trying to get eight hours of sleep. You know what I'm saying? He tries to pile it on. <laughs> now I'm really talking, amen? Even through the dogs, yeah. Some of those dogs I've seen out there, I wonder sometimes, man. <laughs> Not my chihuahuas, though. They're awesome. Amen. <clears throat> they wouldn't hurt a fly. They just think they're tough, you know? But see, the devil tries to get us to focus on where we're at right now. I mean, there's been situations this week in my own life where things have come up, <laughs> you know, with, with maybe some of my kids or just some other situations, and the devil immediately, see, you're not the dad you're supposed to be. You haven't done it right. 
or 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 you know yeah well that's just the way it's going to be for them and don't even try because it's so you know just stupid stuff man but i've learned to resist i've learned that when the devil says something it's an absolute lie and i will do whatever it takes to shut him off if that's to worship if that's to come against him if it's whatever the bible says to resist the devil and he'll flee from us amen but we got to get to the point in our life as a Christian where we know when the devil mouths off, it's the total opposite of what he says is going to happen. Because that's the truth. Well, you're going to die, young Mike. Well, the Bible says I'll live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. That means I won't leave here until I'm done declaring the works of the Lord and the Lord's ready for that. When my race is run. That's what the word says. I'm just being, that's just what it says. I believe that. I believe it. So, we have been raised up together with Christ. Now, let's read on. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, or you could say of his favor, in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of your own selves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now look at verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. By the blood of Christ. Right here, Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 10, those verses we read right there. Those verses right there, God is giving us a chance to be spiritually healthy. When you realize what Jesus has done for you, when you we know we went to the cross. We know he was born. We know he rose again on the third day. Praise God. We know that at that time he went to hell, defeated death, hell, and the grave, took the keys uh, of death, hell, and the grave. Praise God. He pronounced total victory over the devil. He put him under his feet. Praise God. He put him under our feet. He, he, uh, he did it for us. Praise God. When we realize that and when we know that, we can get down on the inside of us that no matter what curveball, no matter what fastball, no matter if he the devil throws it up under your chin to get you off the plate. It doesn't matter what he does. He's a liar. And when you've been bought by the blood of Christ, you can move forward, trust him, sing about him, declare him, walk out the will and plan and purpose that God has for your life. When you get that deep down inside of you, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, what has the blood done? What has the blood done for me? What has the blood done for me? You can get in there. I mean, you can get in there and you can read Scripture after Scripture. You can read uh, promise after promise of what the blood has done for us. Praise God. It's the most powerful thing that's ever been on the face of this earth. It's the most powerful thing that's sitting in heaven at the, at the right hand of the Father. The mercy seat. He has mercy on you. He has mercy on us. The blood's been applied for you, for me. Now, that don't mean we can just, listen, don't mean you can just go off and do whatever you want to do. You know, some of these folks are taking this pretty extreme. I mean, there's some pretty weird stuff being taught about grace and stuff, and I'm not going to get into all that today, but I'm just telling you, grace is good. We need, we're saved by grace. We just read it. Thank God. But if I go out, God will forgive me. I'm just going to go out and have an adulterous affair with whoever I want all the time on my wife. But God will forgive me. He knows my heart. I'm dead. I'm, I'm just being honest. Not just by Monica, but, you know. <laughs> but sin will kill you. Sin will open the door. 
Now, I understand, we've, like I said before, we've made mistakes, we've, we've, we've had things happen, things like that. But listen, when you truly repent about things and you come before the Lord, there's been times I've repented about things, but it didn't mean I stopped right away. It didn't mean I didn't do it again. But as I kept coming before the Lord and coming before Him with this because I'm struggling, and I don't know why I'm struggling, maybe it's because of an insecurity, maybe it's because of the devil's just confused me in my mind over something, there's been habits that have been born in there and got a root on the inside, whatever. But I know if I keep coming before the Lord, John chapter 15 will take place in my life, and He'll start to trim and cut and prune off everything that's not of Him eventually. Don't beat yourself up. Don't bash yourself because you blow it or you make mistakes. Don't give in. Don't give up. Keep going to the cross. Keep going to what the blood says. Keep, if you've got to fall on your face ten times in one day and repent, do it. You'll get victory over that. <clears throat> because God will work with honest people. <clears throat> people that are honest before Him. He will work in your life. <clears throat> he truly will. Man, I'm preaching myself happy this morning. I'm preaching myself thirsty this morning. Praise God. <clears throat> but He will. Be honest before Him. Just be honest with Him. <clears throat> Don't receive the lie of the enemy to tell you that you can't do it, you're not going to do it, you're never going to get healed, you're never going to succeed, you're never going to have this, you're never going to have that. It isn't none of His business what you have, how you are, and who you are. It isn't. It isn't. You just got to get to the point to where he has no say in your life. <clears throat> I wrote this down here. The only way to maintain a life of spiritual health and natural health is to walk totally and completely in love. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. Now, I'll just be honest with you. I'm transparent, and, I'm, and that's fine with me. I don't care. <clears throat> I'm transparent. I know. I know. When I start to feel, and this is me personally, when I start to feel depressed, when I start to feel like there's a heaviness on me, when I start to feel like I'm worthless, and I just feel like quitting and forgetting all this and moving somewhere else and just no one knows who I am or whatever, when I start to think those things and feel those way, feel that way, I know now immediately to check my heart to make sure my love walks correct. That's just me. I don't know if that's anybody else in here. Maybe you identify with that. I don't know. But that's just me. I've noticed that if my love walk is out of whack, that it opens the door to the enemy and he attacks. And he attacks and attacks and attacks. And I mean, he don't just come in and say, hello, Mike, you know, do you mind? No. He attacks full force. And, 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 you know, it's like you get blindsided. Bam! You know, it just, he hits you. But I've noticed that when those feelings start to come and things like that, I go to check my love walk. Now, let me say this. Not every time is my love walk out of whack. It could be because I'm physically tired. It could be because you're physically tired. You know, things pop up, things happen like that. You know, sometimes our minds are a little more, uh, how do I say, weird when we're tired. Does that make sense, you know? So we got to make sure we're getting rest naturally as well. That's important. That's important. But I've noticed that love is the answer. It keeps the door closed, guys. And I'll tell you, listen... It's not going to be, you're not going to wake up every day and just want to go be in love with everybody. <laughs> That's the truth. It so is, man. I mean, there's times, man, where, you know, you just want to just introduce people to the five-fold ministry. You know what I mean? The five-fold ministry? Not in a good way, you know? But you know that you can't. If you love God, you won't want to do that. Your brain wants to do that. But when you really look down, you check yourself down in here, you know you can't do that. <laughs> oh, 
Kumbaya, my Lord. You know what I mean? It's true, though. But we get up every day having a choice. Do we walk in love today or do we just hate the world and be angry at everybody and be rude and all this stuff? I saw a situation yesterday. It just upset me, man, so bad. Not in a way to where I wanted to fight somebody or act crazy with somebody. It upset my heart on the inside because I felt so, it just felt disgusting because it was not love. Some guy just treating some other guy wrong, man, down in Fresno when I was down there in a parking lot. Just treating him bad for no reason, like just being rude and crude and just mean to this, this person. And it just, I didn't like it. It was just so like, what is your problem? Like, really? And it was over a, someone stopping in the parking lot to let a child out real quick. Just nonsense stuff. And it just made me feel so, ugh, on the inside because it was not God at all. And I felt so sorry for the man that, that, that was having to deal with this goofiness now of course i know what some of you are thinking well did you go over and love the guy that was being the turd you know what i mean no i didn't because i thought anything i say to this guy right now is not going to work no matter what because the way he's acting so i just simply walked off and i just said man lord just help that man see what he's doing right now because it's just hurting him you know but <clears throat> There's so much stuff going on in the world today that's not love. It's our time to shine. Because people can truly look at us and say, what is different about you? I just don't get it. How do you not get angry or mad or upset or whatever? We will get angry. We will get mad. We will get upset. <clears throat> and sometimes it's allowed to be angry. There's called a holy anger when you see something the devil's doing that you know ain't right and you come against it out of anger. There, that's okay. I see the devil mess with my kids, it makes me angry. And I don't play games with the devil when he makes me angry. And I come against him. With all vigor and all spiritual power that I have, I come against him. It makes me angry and I'm upset about it. And that's okay. But the key to your health, the key to your peace is to walk in love. I used to hear Brother Hagin say that all the time. He preached this all the time. If something weird's happening or you're not feeling right or something's going on, check down inside what's going on. Look deep down inside. Find out where are you at right now <clears throat> with the Lord. Where are you at right now with your love walk? Where are you at? Are you obeying? Are you just doing whatever you want to do? The Bible says that the willing <clears throat> and the obedient eat the good of the land. You notice it just doesn't say obedient or it just doesn't say willing. It says the willing and the obedient the willing to do the will of God, but also being obedient, doing the will of God, God will bless you. Amen? <clears throat> I hope this is blessing someone in here this morning. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Just turn over a few chapters here. You know, <clears throat> I like to use my dad as an example in a lot of things because obviously he's my dad but and I've been around him my whole life and <clears throat> I've I've seen you know <clears throat> him behind closed doors and I've seen him you know out and about with people that maybe you know you, you didn't see or whatever and I saw how he's treated people and acted towards people and he'll he'll tell you right off the bat he's not perfect he knows it he's transparent too but I've seen some of the <clears throat> things and decisions that he made, even though he knew people were taking advantage of him, he still loved them and helped them. And that's been such a huge example to me. Because Mike Purcell 10 years ago, you want to take advantage of me? We'll see what happens. That's how I thought. That's wrong. Oh, boy. I'm digging a hole now, ain't I? But I've learned from a man that really walks in love. Has he lost his cool? Yeah. Has he been mad? Yeah. Has he said things he shouldn't say about people? Yes. But I've watched him over the years walk more and more in love with people. He set such a good example in my life concerning that that I couldn't run from it. I couldn't deny it. I really did see the love of the Lord in him, you know? And 
we've got to get to the point to where we don't know why people go through certain things. We don't know why people act certain ways. We don't know why people are struggling with certain things. That isn't none of our business when we look upon our neighbor or when we look upon somebody or when we look upon another Christian or another believer. We've got to know it's not our business. It's none of our business why people are the way they are. All our business is for them is to love them and to have compassion for them and to bless them. And to really walk with a tender heart on the inside, even when we're away from them and we think about them, how they're struggling maybe in an area, it's our job to love them, to pray for them, and to bless them. You want to see the anointing? You want to see the peace of God? You want to see the love of God, the presence of God, the, the gifts that are on the inside of you that God's given you? You want to see them start to grow and expand? You start blessing others and loving others and reaching out to others in love. And not with a motive of how can I get from them something I need just because I'm showing them love. Can't do that either. It's got to be unconditional. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. I mean, you could read those two verses right there. You could chew on those things for days. Think about this for a second. Be imitators of God. Be imitators of God. And what is God? Love. Now, I'm, I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know that it's easy for us to get upset over certain things we're seeing and hearing today in our life and in the world and all this stuff. I know it is, and believe me, I understand that fully to my full heart because I get upset and I get angry about certain things and I say certain things because of certain things I see or hear. I understand that. But what God is trying to do with His body right now is he's trying to show us spiritually what season we're in as the body of Christ. So get your eyes, get our eyes off of what's going on in the natural <clears throat> and get our eyes over in the spirit realm one, uh, wanting to know and see and hear where God's at right now and what he's wanting to do in the midst of this turmoil. This isn't new to God. <clears throat> God didn't fall off his throne a year ago and go, wow, this is a surprise to me. I can't believe that's happening down there in America. <clears throat> it's not a shock to him. It's not a surprise to him. What I think shocking to him sometimes is how body of Christ or believers or us don't get over in and find out what season we're living in. I think that's a shock to him. He's provided all the information. He's provided all the anointing. He's provided all the wisdom, revelation, knowledge. He's provided all that for every individual in the body of Christ, and he's provided it for the corporate body of Christ, the bride of Christ. He's, crea he's, he's already created it for us. He's made it available for us. If we'll get in there and we'll spend time and we'll listen and we'll ask him what's going on and how can we be the answer, <clears throat> he'll begin to download on the inside of you where you're at, who you are as a believer, and the job and the task that he has for you as an individual. But then he'll also teach you how to join up and link together with the body of Christ and fight together in the Spirit and know and recognize the season that we're in right now and what part we have to play as the army of the Lord. <clears throat> but the first thing we've got to do to do that is to make sure our love walk is correct. That is so important. So important. I had someone here a couple weeks ago call me. It's a believe, she, uh, this person's a believer. And she called me, and she had heard me talking about the love of God, kind of what I'm talking about right now, but a, a little different way I was kind of hitting it. And I was talking about how when I was going through leukemia in 2008, that one of the first things the Lord dealt with me about was my love walk, that I needed to get it right because that had opened the door in my life for the devil for certain things and this and that. 
So he pulled me out of that darkness because I was in darkness concerning that. See, you, you, you believe a lie and you don't listen to the Holy Spirit and you keep going, going, going for years and years and years and years, that darkness grows stronger and stronger and stronger to where it gets you over to where you think actually there's not even a problem. Dad would come to me and he'd say, look, this, these situations you're talking about, this hatred and unforgiveness you got in your life concerning these people in this situation, you better let it go. You better repent. You better drop it. And on the inside, I didn't think there was an issue. I thought I was right in the matter. I didn't think there was a problem. That's how much darkness I was in concerning that situation. And God started to talk to me and reveal to me, Mike, look, you've hindered my hands because you won't obey the word of the Lord when it comes to my love, when it comes to loving others, when it comes to having compassion, when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to not holding resentment and hatred and bitterness. There's nothing I can do because you're playing the game. And sometimes we just need the Lord to talk to us straight out. I need that. I'm thankful for that. It saved my life. <clears throat> in, 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 in December of 2007, it was like December 29th or something like that, December 28th, I was driving over the overpass on Avenue 12 going to Fresno to go to the doctor. I, hadn't known, I didn't know at the time I had leukemia in my body. I didn't find out until a couple weeks after this experience I had. But I'm driving over that overpass, and I just got off the phone with Dad, and he gave me that talk again. He said, you've got to get a hold of this. I believe the Lord's showing you this is part of the reason why you've been sick in your body. And it dawned on me. See, something happens to us, and we get desperate. We, we tend to listen. And fine, if that's the case, thank God we listened. And I listened that day. And I realized he's right, and he's been right, and the Lord's right. And I was going over that overpass. I had just started to drop down that overpass heading into Fresno. And I said, God, forgive me. I know I've been wrong concerning those people. Lord, I know they've done me wrong, but, Lord, I, I release them. I forgive them, and I will not hold anything against them, Lord. I release that. And I for, ask you to forgive me of my hardened heart towards them and my hatred. Because I was to the point where I was in hate. And I repented. And I said, Father, and this is what I said. I, 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 it was just like yesterday. It was so spiritual for me. I said, Father, I don't know how to love people like I'm supposed to, like you do. So I'm asking you to baptize me with your love, God, because I need to know. I need it. And I felt the Holy Spirit come on me in that car. It like changed me on the inside. I don't know how else to explain it to you. Now see, we can have an experience like that, but then we've got to live that experience. When you go down in the Spirit and God lays you out before Him or you're in His presence, we should come up with something changed, something dealt with, being in His presence, because in His presence, he, he changes us, He heals us, He helps us. And I, that day, felt such a relief. And what the Lord was doing, I didn't even know I was sick at the time. What the Lord was doing is he was preparing me to go through that battle. My heart was clean. I had released that issue. I got before the Lord. I got honest before him. I came before him out of all honesty. And I was able to go through that process. I didn't know I was getting ready to go into a storm, a storm of my life. I had no idea that was coming what came. But while I went through that storm, because of what I did before the full storm hit, I was able to walk through that process with the divine presence of the Lord on my life through that year of 2008. And a lot of you were here and you watched. But I had to make decisions in my mind so my heart would hook up. See, God... He wants us to be healthy spiritually, and He wants us to be healthy naturally. God didn't create sickness. God didn't create torment. God didn't create tormented minds and unpeaceful minds. He didn't do it. 
And if we're having that and if we're struggling in that area in our lives or we're going through something right now, the only way I know, the only way that I know to deal with that is to get before the Lord and say, why is it like this? Just ask him. Well, I have, Pastor Mike, and you know what? So have I. I've asked him several times about certain things. And I've noticed that he gives me peace at a time. Pieces at a time sometimes. Why does he do that? I don't know. And the society we live in, we want him to give it all to us right now. We want to figure it out. We want it to be over. <clears throat> we don't want to mess with it anymore. We're tired of messing. With it. We want it now. Give me my Big Mac now. It better be ready in two minutes. Or I'll be yelling at you and driving off. You know what I mean? I mean, <clears throat> that's just the way society is. People can't even stop at a stop sign anymore. Got to really be careful driving, man. Thinking about buying a big old Hummer, man. That way. <laughs> Get out of the way. But see, we've asked God, and sometimes he'll give it to us in pieces. Just like that happened to me here a couple months ago, man, sitting there in the house, you know, and I'm like, God, help me, help me. And all of a sudden, it's like I've been asking him for a couple years now about a certain situation. He's been talking to me and using other people to say things to me that has been giving me pieces to the puzzle and this and that. And then all of a sudden, just one day, I was sitting there, and I was like, yeah, Lord, you know, I'm just ready for this to be finished. What, what, you know, I, I need to know what's going on. I had been seeking him for a year or so about a situation in my life, about anxiety and fear and just stuff that was attacking me. And he spoke to me, and this is all he said to me. It's old mind habits. That was one of the best revelations I have ever received from the Lord in my life besides Jesus dying on the cross and raising for me. I don't know how else to explain it to you. It dawned on me. I got a revelation. Why? Now, not why the devil attacks, because he's going to no matter what, but how do I respond when he attacks with fear he showed it to me he said it's old mind habits and he got to showing me to where whenever i hear something happen maybe to my kids or to my wife or finances or something that relates to me and my first thought would go immediately over into fear of the worst and once i would get over into that fear oh no here come the symptoms of fear. Your heart starts pumping. Do, 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 do. You start to feel dizzy. You start to feel weak. You start to breathe short because you're panicking. And then what happens? You pass out. Now, maybe some of you don't deal with that, and thank God. But let me tell you if you do, it's old mind habits. God started showing me that. So I got the revelation of when something comes up, and there's been things come up since then, where I know the old, when I didn't, before I had that revelation, I would get over into that, or I'd be fighting not to get into that fear, or to get into that. Now I know when that happens, it happens as soon as my mind starts to know. That's an old mind habit. I'm not giving in to old mind habits. There's nothing wrong, and even if there is something wrong, God's going to take care of it no matter what. He always has, and he always will. And you stop it right there. Now, I believe this is talking to someone this morning. It's not just me. This is some revelation for some folks in here. It's old mind habits that you allow yourself to go over into. Start asking God to help you cut those things off to develop new mind habits to where you go over into what the Lord has said, or you go over into what God has said about you as an individual, or you go over into what the Lord has said to you out of His Word. And let Him heal your mind. Let Him renew your mind in that stuff. I'm not going to live in fear the rest of my life. I'm not going to give over to that feeling of anxiety and panic over something. And it was so awesome, and I'm wrapping it up here, but it was so awesome that I got that revelation in me back in mid-June. And I was getting ready to go see my oncologist, my yearly checkup, two weeks later at the end of June. And I got that revelation. 
And I walked in there, and that was the most peaceful visit I ever had at the doctor. I could feel the anxiety trying to come on me because of the trauma that happened there, you know, our minds sometimes. But see, God will heal you of traumas as well. Because there's things that's happened to all of us at some point or another in our life where it's created a, a trauma in our life and, and we, we get around certain things or certain buildings or certain people or something like that, a situation, and we begin to experience that trauma that we've experienced. Memories start to come back. Things start to happen. And so when I was down there, that was the most peaceful time I'd ever sat there and waited. And I get into this. <clears throat> I get into there, and I'm sharing this because this is how God is. He'll always give us a word or say something to us before the devil tries to attack with his fat mouth. And I go in there, and I'm just at peace. It's the best. I mean, I'm just like, yeah, you know. <clears throat> so they come get you, and you've been sitting already for an hour, and then they come get you, and you're like, yes, I've made it to the promised land. I'm going in. I'm seeing the doctor. And then you go into the room, and then you sit another hour. You know what I mean? So there she comes, gives me, he's take, taking me back to the little small room that you got to wait in, you know. And I'm walking in, and the door's open. I just happened to kind of walk by the door, and I looked up at the door, and I saw the number 10 on the door. And I thought, I, I really didn't think too much of it. Honestly, I'll just be quite honest with you. When I saw the number 10, the first thing I thought of was my football number, because that's the number I wore when I played football growing up, number 10. That was my favorite number. That's just how my mind worked. Didn't think nothing of it. Sat down, sitting in there, waiting, waiting. You know, they're playing Jeopardy music. I'm waiting. Doctor comes in. What's going on, Michael? Oh, nothing. He's thumbing through the paper. He's like, man, your white blood, your blood is perfect again. Your white blood cell count's perfect. Your antibodies are actually to the very top where they need to be, <clears throat> which they told me that they would never be like that ever again because of the damage it did to my bone marrow. So every time I go in there, my blood's perfect. It's been like that the last eight years. You know, amen? So I'm like, yeah, praise God, I knew it again, hallelujah, whatever. And then I go, so, uh, doctor, how much longer do I, I mean, this is already the 10th year, like, since I've been healed or whatever. How much longer do I got to come in here? I mean, I'm, you know, whatever. I mean, it's, it's cool to see you. You're a good dude, and I enjoy your, you know, fellowship or whatever. But, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just you know. Do I really still need to come down here every year? And he goes, oh, yeah, 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 you got to come down here every year because it's going to come back. That's what he said to me. you got to keep coming. We're going to grow old together. That's what he said to me. And I just, like, I just look, I looked at him, and I, I, I can't tell you every thought that went through my mind when he said that. I'll just leave it at that. Amen. And I just go, oh, whatever. That's exactly what I said. And then I don't remember what else he said because I just shut him off. And I looked inside. Immediately I shut him off. All I heard was, mar, 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 you know, like Charlie Brown's mom. That's about basically all I heard, honestly. I don't even remember one word he said after that. And I just looked at my spirit and I laughed inside. See, you know, because I don't want to freak the doctor out and just say, no, you ain't devil. I do that, they're going to call the psychiatrist. I'm going to be locked up in a straight arm jacket and all that. So you got to know where you're at and what's going on, okay? Don't be a, use your brain, you know what I mean? God gave you common sense, use it, you know? But on the inside, I was doing that. And <clears throat> before the doctor came in, I forgot to say this, when I was sitting there before the doctor came in and said what he said, and, and the doc, the, listen, the doctor, they study scientifically by science, their theories, all that, fine. Okay, I understand. That's what they study. That's all they know. But they don't know the healing power of God, where I stand, the prophetic word that I have. And so before the doctor came in, as I sat there, I was sitting there waiting, and I saw that number 10 on the door, and when I looked up at it again, I saw it, and when I looked at it, the Lord said, what does it mean in the Bible? I go, Okay, so I started thumbing around, looking out with the number 10, and one of the meanings of the number 10 is a completeness or a, 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 a season or a time that you went through this completed and it's over and you're moving on into the next one. That number 10. See, the Lord gave me a prophetic word. A prophetic, let's say it this way because it's true. 
a prophetic sign. It's a natural sign, and it's a spiritual sign that he gave me that day, the number 10. Before the doctor came in, and the devil used him to speak demonic prophecy over me, he didn't know better. Exactly. That's why I said doctors know what they know because they study this. I love him. He's an awesome doctor. But he doesn't know what the Lord's done in me. So that God will always give you a word, a dream, a sign, a vision. He'll always give you something in you before the devil tries to attack. He always will. So when the doctor said that, me on the inside, knowing what I know and knowing what the Word says about me and knowing what Jesus did for me, I mean, it's so obvious that within eight months, or excuse me, yeah, within eight months, my bone marrow was perfect, which doesn't happen. He said it was mush, diseased and done. He thought I was dying, he said, that night they took that bone marrow biopsy from me. He told me that that next week when I went in to see him again. He couldn't believe the diagnosis I got. He thought I was dead. He said he'd already started, and this is, this. I'm not lying to you. I'm being honest. You can ask my mom and daddy. They're right there. He said I was already gooking on the list to get you on a bone marrow transplant list because I thought you were dead by the way your bone marrow looked. That's what he told me. And I'm telling you, I don't care what storms the enemy throws or what he tries to do. You have faith. You know who God is. You know your God. And if you've got to get yourself in the Word 18 hours a day, 5 hours a day, 2 hours, whatever, it doesn't matter to build yourself up on your most holy faith and to learn what God has done for you and who He is and what He's done to get out of the junk you're going through, then do it. Why live miserable? Why live that way? We're not perfect, but God is. And He's a restorer. And He's a healer. And He will restore your life. And there's so many people in here that are living epistles to this, that are living people that follow God and serve God and have watched God move in your life. We've gone through storms together. We've gone through rocky seas together. But we've also been on the hill together. And listen, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible says that Jesus, that God, has raised us far above all principalities and powers on the earth, and we're seated together in Christ Jesus. In heavenly places. See yourself from his perspective. Not from your perspective or what your mom said about you, your dad or your grandpa, or your grandma, or your neighbor, or teacher, or whatever. See yourself who you are in Christ. And if you don't know who you are in Christ, then get in the Word and find out who you are in Christ and let Him build you. Because we all start at day one. Get in there and get with it. Hallelujah. But stay healthy spiritually. Stay healthy physically in the natural by walking in love. If you'll put God first, if you'll put love first, you will be able to fulfill and walk out the plan and purpose that God has for your life. And when the devil comes and he tries to throw the roadblock in front of you, God will show you what you need to do to go right through that roadblock. That's the truth, guys. That's the word of the Lord, praise God. Amen. Now let me shift gears just for a second here. Is there anybody in here that this means something to? Internal bleeding. Does that mean anything to anybody in this place? In, internal bleeding. Anybody? Could be a family member. Uh, obviously, it's not anybody in here. I don't, I, personally, because you would be, yeah. Interesting, but she, she's already left. She's not here anymore. Come on up here. Let's pray for her then. Okay, amen. Heard, heard those words during praise and worship. I heard eternal bleeding. Praise God. Well, let's pray for Mia. Had no idea. All right. Thank you, Lord. We watched the Lord heal her knee miraculously. Remember that here a couple years ago? That was awesome, man. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's just stretch our hands out towards Josie. Josie's Mia's mother. And let's just pray for Mia right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you gave me that word because there's a healing word attached. There's a healing uh, gift attached to it today. 
So, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I speak to me as a body, and I command that internal bleeding to cease and to stop now. In the name of Jesus, right now, in Jesus' name. And I release healing right now, wherever she's at. Father, I thank you for touching her. I thank you for the anointing of the Lord to flow upon her right now, in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you within 24 hours, this will stop, and strength will come, and healing will come, and victory will come in Jesus' name. I speak healing and deliverance over me right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for Josie, Lord. Thank you for using her to to release that. Word into her as she calls her today and releases what we've done for her today and prayed for her. I thank you that that healing anointing just flows and the peace of God flows into me in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the healing anointing. Shikarabasata. In Jesus' mighty, 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 mighty name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name. That's the anointing right there. In Jesus' name. That's good how God just will release that sometimes. Amen. In Jesus' name. I heard the word blockage. Anybody dealing with blockage or something? Your artery or I I don't know. I just heard blockage. Yeah. Sinus. Okay. All right. I'll come pray for you too, Steve. Anybody else? Just come up here. In Jesus' name, I command our sinuses to be open and to be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I receive that word for myself because my ears have been plugged all summer, really. I command my ears to open in Jesus' name. And I receive the healing power right now. Jesus. Thank you for t- touching Tammy right now in Jesus' name. I command our sinuses to be healed and restored in the name of Jesus. If anybody else, is that word means something to you, come on up here. It's to you, okay. In Jesus' name. Be healed, sinus, and open in Jesus' name. Father, I ask you to mend and heal sinuses right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thanks, Dale. Father, we stand with Kelly right now in the name of Jesus. We command her sinuses to be healed in Jesus' name. I command them to open. Lord, I ask you that you totally touch and heal. No surgery. I ask for a miracle, God, for her. Let her be a walking testimony, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, just visit her right now. Visit Kelly right now. Touch her in Jesus' name. Command her sinuses to open and to be restored the way you created them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We agree together right now in Jesus' name for Kelly. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You too? Maria? Okay, wow. A lot of sinuses and ears plugged, man. That's just crazy. Don't give up, guys. Just keep seeking the Lord and praying for your people, praying for the people right now. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you right now for healing the flow right now in Jesus' name. I ask you to touch her ears and sinuses. I command them to open in Jesus' name. And Lord, we resist allergies. We don't have to have them in our bodies. And Lord, I thank you for a fresh touch from heaven on Maria right now in Jesus' name. She's going to do the back bend. That happens sometimes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Healing flow in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hey, brother. All right. Concern. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, right now, I thank you. For Rose. Rose, right? Yes, okay, I don't want to mess up. Thank you for Rose right now in Jesus' name, Father. I ask you to touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let the power of God come on her like never before. Let her sense your presence, your peace, your joy. 
And I thank you, Father God, for spiritual awakening in her life, Lord. I thank you that she sees and hears and knows what you're saying to her, Father. And I thank you that the doors of heaven are open and that she sees and hears and knows who you are, Father. So I thank you for that spiritually, and I also thank you for naturally the health in the inside of her. I command healing to flow in Jesus' name. I command blockage to go in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for the healing power of Jesus right now to touch. Healing angels, I thank you for ministering right now to her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Diane. Just pray for you. She's just her her left eye has been giving her problems with vision. So let's just reach, reach our hands out right now and command her eye to be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. I command clarity right now into her eyeball in the name of Jesus. I command restoration in her vision in the name of Jesus. Thank you for healing angels, Father. Ministering from the throne of heaven right now. And I thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. You know, Diane, this is a word from the Lord to you right now. All right? God is doing and taking care of everything that you've asked Him for. Okay? He's doing it. So now, you just rest in that word. You rest in that knowing that He's doing what He needs to do. He's doing it for your whole family. Okay. And then there'll be times where you'll just think about that and you'll just break out in a praise praise break. <laughs> and you'll see your vision be restored in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The fire of God. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Now you'll watch, you'll see your vision start to be restored. Let me lay hands on you, Steve, as you play. Remember that vision I had that one time of you where you were playing and I saw angels standing behind you? And as you ministered on the keyboard, they were healing you and, and, and just uh, 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 letting the healing anointing flow into you So as you play. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for that. I lay my hands on my brother right now in Jesus' name. And I command full restoration. Full restoration. I command order, divine order in his body, in his organs, and in every situation in his life right now in the name of Jesus. As his pastor, I speak my authority and I say in Jesus' name, healing go and flow now in Jesus' name. Body be peace. Body be whole. Body be restored. And function normal in Jesus' name from this moment on, right now, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Just receive that in the name of Jesus. It's the truth. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands for a moment, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. All right, there's someone on the, on the, the video that's gonna, either watching now or going to be watching later that your name is Bethany. 
and that you've got like a high hernia and it's bleeding on the inside and causing problems. So we release healing power right now in the name of Jesus. We have a member of our church here that, that just gave that to me by a word of knowledge. So we release that into Bethany's life. We release healing. We command that hernia to dry up and to go now in Jesus' name. And we release healing power right now. Let it flow. Let the fire of God burn in that area of her body, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for healing Bethany right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray for everyone in this place with a situation on their heart. I don't know the situation, Lord, but you do. And so, Lord, we give it to you right now. We ask you for healing. We thank you for peace and strength and healing in people's bodies right now, Lord. In this place, I command pain to leave in Jesus' name. There's an atmosphere of healing here. So receive right now, by faith, the healing presence of Jesus. Ever since I started praying for people up here today, my ears have opened. My ears have been plugged this whole time. You've probably seen me plugging my nose and blowing to open my ears. My ears are open right now. They've been plugged this whole summer. Thank you, Lord, for healing me today. I receive that, Father. Isn't that awesome when you're praying for people for healing? He heals you. Isn't that good? Man, wow. That's a key. You're struggling with something? Go start praying for people that, that are dealing with the same thing. Watch God heal you because you're giving and blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's stand. Praise God. You know, I, I love the Holy Ghost, and it's easy. We could stay here all day in this presence and just rest. Steve would probably get tired of sitting that whole time, you know, but we wouldn't make him, but we wouldn't make him, but it's just good. Father, I thank you that you've done what you wanted to do today in here. And I thank you for my family that's in this place. I thank you for the people that are here, God. I thank you for the blessing of the Lord in their lives. Yes. Okay, okay, we'll take care of that. And Lord, we lift up Clarence right now. We got some prayer requests. We lift up Clarence right now. We thank you, Lord, for healing him right now in Jesus' name. I command his blood to flow normal. I command blockage to loose him in Jesus' name. Go from him now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we plead the blood of Jesus over him. <clears throat> we thank you for the strength of God to flow in his body right now in the hospital while he's there. Let the room light up with your healing glory right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we also pray for this uh, child, Uriah, that's in ICU in Valley Children's. Lord, in the name of Jesus, it's, it's Sister Linda Cabrera's grand, great-granddaughter, we speak the healing power of Jesus in this baby right now. We command healing to flow. We command strength to come to that body. We speak life to Uriah in the name of Jesus Christ. We say you'll live and not die and declare the works of God. We thank you for miracle-working power to flow through this child right now in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, there's, a, there's four people here. They're siblings. They've been having seizures. They're asking for prayer. There also, there's four siblings that have seizures. That's a, de that's a demon. You take your hands off these people now in Jesus' name. As a church, the believer's church and the body of Christ, we come against you, devil, Loose these people now in Jesus' name. You take your hands off this family in the name of Jesus, and we speak peace, we speak healing right now. Loose your hold over them in Jesus' name. And we command health and peace to come to their bodies, their nerves, their minds, their organs now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for a miracle testimony from these siblings in the name of Jesus. We release this healing presence that's in here. We release it by faith into these situations in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask you right now in Jesus' name that as we leave this building this morning, Lord, I thank you that the peace of God will reside on the inside of us. 
that you'll give us divine appointments, you'll give us God appointments, you'll give us appointments this week to release the glory and the love of the Father. That we're a church alive, hallelujah, wanting to demonstrate the kingdom. And Lord, we thank you for that word that we got earlier about our children and grandchildren. We'll write that down on the tablet of our heart and we will speak and we will see and we will declare it is what you've spoke to us today, God. And we'll watch them come. (laughs) Ha ha, glory. It's sealed. Sealed. It's done. It's done. It's sealed. It's a done deal. In the name of Jesus. If you love Jesus, just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah! Amen. Well, you're dismissed. Love you.